Geography now Albania. There's actually a country we were thinking of spending some time in, but we never actually ended up going. We ended up going to Georgia instead, and we haven't had the opportunity to go back. We had like a an apartment that we were looking at that we were gonna stay in for possibly a month or two, and yeah, now we didn't. But it is definitely gonna be a place that we will go to in the future. And that's why we're reacting to it right now so we can learn more about what to do and just what we need to know when we go to Frack in Albania. Cause I'm sure, I mean, we know a very, very surface level information about it. So I'm sure we'll learn enough about this video. We know people from there are called Albanians. We know they have a big city. We know that it's by the ocean. And we know that it kind of is in the shape of like a tall chicken nugget. That just offended everyone I'm in sorry. Albania. You have been banned. If you guys enjoy uh, the video, make sure to subscribe. You can also check out our travel vlog channel. We've been traveling around Asia and we're in countries like Georgia, Italy, and Iceland and Europe. So if you want to check those out, link in the description below. If you want to see us react to more Albania stuff in the future, let us know videos you would like to see from us on here. Well, let's do this, Albania high school there's always like that one little emo kid that just kind of keeps to themselves and sits in the corner but then about 10 years later at the reunion you find out they actually have a lot of friends and they're pretty cool um, that's kind of like what albania is. <laughs> okay oh! <laughs> all right albanians you're all emo it's time to learn but you got a lot of friends now! now you know the drill before anything let's dissect that flag it's red it's a really cool flag it is as you can see, the Albanian flag... They have, flag like, uh, conjoined twin birds. Yeah. So it makes it a bit hard for them to fly, but they get around. It just works. And they have to share all their worms and stuff. Yeah, it's unfortunate. But, you know, their stomachs are actually combined, so... Oh, that makes it convenient. It's actually pretty sick. Combined stomach, but different buttholes, so... It... <laughs> <laughs> it's just a red banner with a double-headed eagle emblem on top of it. The red representing bravery and courage, and the double-headed eagle is an emblem that the Albanians have claimed that they have historically used to identify themselves as a people group, even though there may be some other countries that would argue. In terms of its political geography, Albania is located in the South Balkan region, right north of Greece, south of Montenegro, west kind of, looks of like Macedonia, a McDonald's and Kosovo. Nugget, tall version. Very tall version. <laughs> Even though Serbia will tell you that Kosovo is totally not Kosovo and it's just part of Serbia, but we'll discuss that in another video. And off the coast of the Ionian and the Adriatic Seas. Now when it comes to Albania's borders, it almost kind of looks like every single country surrounding Albania is trying to take as much coastline away as they can from Albania. In the south, Greece is like, eh, I'm just gonna take these extra oh, wow. miles of beach. In the north, Montenegro's like, eh, I'm just gonna take the entire Buna River. And even inland, Macedonia is like, eh, I'm just gonna take the majority of the Prespa and Orid lakes and access to those lakes. Albania doesn't really get much regard. Now, unlike many of its neighbors that border the Mediterranean, Albania doesn't really have many islands that border its coastline. In fact, oh, there are wow. only about seven to like, ten-ish islands. Most of which just north in like Croatia, there's like tons. Tons. And Greece, tons. Yeah. And they Weird. only have seven to ten. That's crazy, actually. Wow. And those are some of them right there. <laughs> which are small, uninhabited, or barely inhabited, like Tongo and Stilo Island in the south, which each only have one house on one them, house? and most of the other ones are basically barely even the size of an Ikea. However, a lot of them do have a lot of cool historical ancient sites and landmarks on them, such as Ali Pasha Castle on Butrint, oh, that's and cool. the 13th century monastery on Sveles Island. Except for one! Sazan Island. Sazan Island has actually played a very crucial role in Albania's history. It was taken over by the Romans and then the Byzantines and the Ottomans and the Greeks and the Italians and the British and the Greeks, but the Greeks didn't want it again, so they gave it to the Italians. And then the Italians finally gave it to Albania. It's a long story. What the heck? Wow. Sazan Island is the only somewhat inhabited island as the people living there are only there to maintain the former military bases oh, that were okay. built. In terms of its physical geography, Albania is about 70% mountainous with about 25% of the That's land being nice. arable for agriculture and farming, beautiful. which by the way is a sector that employs about half of the entire population wow. of Albania. Oh, wow. That's Albanians take their agriculture very seriously. In fact, for a while, they were completely closed off from the rest of the world and self-reliant. In addition to fruits and vegetables and other produce, one thing that Albanians really like to grow, tobacco. 
they, they oh, really? do. Uh, they, they, they just do. Now, Albania is also loaded with a bunch of other types of landscapes, like rolling green hills and lush forests, and very nice warm Looks temperate very beaches, beautiful. such as the ones at Samil and Dures. Speaking of which, interesting factoid, if you go to Albania, pretty much everywhere around the entire country, you'll notice these World War II concrete war bunkers oh. located everywhere. The reason being because in the middle of the 20th century, the old communist leader Enver Hoxha took over and built these war bunkers, about 700,000 of them, oh and placed them all gosh. over the country as a means for militaristic preparation. Now, of course, that costed the country a lot just, of like, money go into that they pretty much didn't have. I know Bald and Bankrupt yeah. did a video and he went into them, so... That's pretty yeah, epic. You can. It was a poor investment because they never really needed them. However, to this day, it's almost like a little I Spy game. When you go to Albania, see how many bunkers you can find. I Spy. All right, let's go bunker hunting in Albania. Now, in we'll check off go to every 700,000. percent the vast majority of people in Albania identify as ethnically Albanian. Now, there are some minorities like Greeks and Macedonians and Montenegrins as well. The vast majority of people in Albania also speak the Albanian language, which is one of the most distinguishable facets of this country. The Albanian language to this day relates to no other Indo-European language branch in oh, the world. Really? It stands alone as its own, and it's a very unique language. Albania also has a very interesting faith based background about 60 percent of the people identify as non-denominational or secular muslim and about 20 percent identify as christian mostly catholic okay. and orthodox although historically albania at one point banned all religious freedom and was declared the very first atheist state in the An entire world state. during the communist regime until 1992. interesting side note in albania they shake their head to say yes and they nod their head to say oh, no gosh. really that would be so confusing why even, even even if we know that beforehand, it would still be so hard to get used to. Do you have, do you have any of this? Can I get one? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the friend zone. This is where things get a little interesting because historically Albania has probably been one of the most socially awkward countries in the world. Shortly after Albania was relinquished from the Ottoman Empire, Albania kind of went through a few decades of not exactly quite knowing how to be Albania again. And that's when the Soviets came in. For a while, Albania was uh, part Stalin of Stalin and his again. cute little tank. And that's when the oh. Look at him. He's kind of big. How is he so big? How would he fit in that tank? He was a fat daddy. He's as big as a tank? For a while, yep. Albania was Dang. part of the Soviet bloc. However, during the Sino-Soviet split, which is something we will discuss all that drama in another video, Albania actually decided to side with China and not Russia, <laughs> which strategically may have been a bad decision. The reason being because that made China Albania's only ally in the what world. The? And it can get kind of hard when your only ally in the world isn't even close to you geographically. And to add on top of that, in the 70s, China was kind of like, look, Albania, it was cute how you wanted to tag along, but you're on your own. And then Albania had no allies. In the last few Aww. years of communism and following Poor the death Albania. of Enver Hoxha, Albania kind of saw what was going on and they were like, yeah, we kind of need to turn things around. And finally, in 1990, the communism regime ended, making Albania a constitutional republic. This opened up a lot of doors. And from the 90s up until today, Albania has become one of the most social countries in the world, opening up its arms, trying to regain as many diplomatic relations as it can with as many countries, and to this day has about 40 embassies in 40 different countries. Albania oh, is not a social butterfly. Albania is a social pterodactyl. They even named the ah! street after George W. Bush after he visited there one time in 2007. Was, didn't Georgia have... Georgia had something like that, too. I don't know if it was... Oh, it was Bush because Bush oh, was were... the president during the Russia invasion. Yeah, they were playing like his speech. I think, or something like that. Very interesting. Interesting side note, there's an early episode of The Simpsons in which Bart signs up for a foreign exchange student program and goes to France, whereas the Simpson family receives an exchange student named Adil from Albania. The episode was filmed in 1990, right before the fall of communism in Albania, and lightly portrays the tensions between Americans and Soviet-influenced nations back in that time. In terms of its best friend, Albania would probably consider Kosovo their best friend, considering oh. that the vast majority of people in Kosovo are Albanians. Gotta support your brothers. In conclusion, Albania may have been that little reserved, quiet kid, and yeah, maybe they made a few bad decisions here and there historically, but they really started to turn things around. And you gotta give that for them. Stay tuned, Algeria is coming up next. Albania. Albania, learned a lot of info for sure. Did you learn a lot of info?
Oh, dang oh. it. Albania is another, is a place that's like, I think on our bucket list for Europe, it's one of our up there places to go, actually. It fits our travel style a lot, which is adventurous, not too crazy, like busy areas and uh, affordable. Yeah. So Albania and some of the, uh, and that area of Europe is probably where we're going to be going next when we go to Europe. I'm really excited about that. There's some mountains to climb there in Albania. Another uh, part of our travel style is climbing mountains, and there is a lot of them. Even though we're not that good at it anymore. No, we got out of shape. But let us know if there's some epic hikes we can do in Albania. For sure. Give us some videos. Other, Give us some more videos about Albania, whether it's hikes or food or culture or anything, travel-wise as well. And uh, see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.